Bonjour tout le monde, Madame Mayo here. And here we are with another list of vocabulary. This is chapitre 6, faisant de la cuisine. So if you would just take a moment and take out your packet for chapter 6, open up to your page your list of vocabulaire mode. We're going to go through this together, okay? Picture by picture. I'm going to give you a moment to do that. All right, mes amis, allons-y, faisons la cuisine. This is the verb faire, as I'm sure you can recognize it, in the new form. It means let's do it. Let's cook. All right, so that's what we're talking about here. Let's cook. We're going to be using vocabulary here, talking about all the actions, right? Which are verbs. We know that verbs are actions. All the actions that we do when we want to make something. Okay? Éplucher des pommes de terre. Éplucher des pommes de terre. Let me see if I can... Get some things up here that will help us see what we're talking about. Yeah, this helps. Éplucher. Éplucher means to peel. Éplucher. So how can we remember it? To peel. P -l -u. P -l -u. P-E-L-U. Peel. I'm going to peel some potatoes. Éplucher de pommes de terre is to peel some potatoes. All right. Write that down, please. Right inside your packet, right next to épluché de pommes de terre, peel, to peel, to peel some potatoes. Because remember, de means some, and the infinitive here means to, to peel some potatoes. <laughs> Can't emphasize that enough. It seems to be something that we have a problem with sometimes. All right, next we have a morceau. Now, this is a word that's very similar in English. If you've ever heard the term a morsel, can I have a morsel? Or like chocolate morsels, if you like to make those toll house cookies. A morceau is a piece, right? So, a morceau is just a piece. Please write that down on your paper. A morceau. And then, coup. Coupe, you've seen the word coup before. Coupe means to cut. So to cut into pieces, and you can see morceau ends in EAU, and when we make it plural, EAU words end in X, not an S. So coupe en morceau is to cut into pieces. Please write that down on your paper to cut in pieces. All right, let's move on to the next picture here. And on your paper, it is un rondelle. Un rondelle. Which, un rondelle, if you think about it, it's round, right? <laughs> it's a round slice. It's just a round slice. Coupé en rondelle means to cut into round slices. Is there a word for that? I'm not sure in English. Do we have a word for a round slice? I don't know. But that's what we're doing. We're taking a carrot and we're chopping it up. And we're cutting, coupé en rondelle, cutting into round slices. All right. You guys with me? Tout le monde est avec moi? Okay. Ashe, ashe, ashe. This means we're going to grind it up. We're grinding it up. It's kind of a gross picture, but we're, we're grinding up some meat. So this is what, you know, this is what we call ground beef, right? I'm going to show you. La viande ashe means ground beef. This is the verb. Ashe, to ground some de la means some. De la means some viande, beef. Sorry if I'm just pushing that, but it's a hard concept. Okay. 
Frapper. Frapper is to grate. We are grating here. Frapper is to grate. Du fromage. Hopefully, you know, du. Du, du is some. Du is some. Fromage. Cheese. Frapper du fromage is to grate some cheese. Ajouter. All right. This might be a new verb for us. I think it is. Ajouter means to add. You're adding something in. You can see in the picture here. He's definitely pouring something into the pot here. So it can mean to pour, but it also means to add. So he's adding some water or he's pouring some water. And again, I just want to point out, and I'm so sorry I keep banging it home here, but it's de l'eau, de l'eau, et l'apostrophe. That means some. That is the partitive. Everybody, please try and learn this. The partitive, it means some. Ajouter de l'eau, to add some water. Merci. All right. Verser du lait. So same thing. Verse is to add, right, to pour. Du. Say it with me, people. Some. Verse. Du. Du means some. Lait is milk. Hopefully you know. Verse du lait. Add some milk. Write it on your paper, please. Here's a new verb for us. A new verb for you guys. Remuer, remuer. That means to stir. To stir a sauce. So you see our chef here. You have this wonderful chef's cap here. It's very important. Il est très important. Cet homme là. All right, so he's adding some milk and to stir some sauce. Okay, next word we have, une casserole. So this is a little tricky. This is what we call a faux ami. It's not exactly the same in English, but similar. We think of a casserole as like a casserole dish, like, oh, I'm going to bring a big casserole dish, like a big ziti. No. In French, une casserole is actually what we would call a saucepan. Yeah, or, you know, a pot. You know, a pot you cook in. You just put some water in there, you boil it up, you make your macaroni and cheese. That's the way you make it. But une casserole is a pot or a saucepan. Un couvercle is the cover. So you can see cover is right in the word there. Cover is in the word. Un couvercle. Un couvercle. Cover is in the word. And then you have in poel. It's kind of a funny word, poel. It's such a fry pan. In poel is a fry pan, and I'm sorry. It just there's no way I can make that make sense for you. <laughs> in poel is a fry pan. I know it's just like this one slide here is really confusing because you have in casserole, casserole dish, but no, it's a boiling pot. And then you have un poil, which looks like a pot, but no, it's a fry pan. So sorry. At least we have un couvercle, which at least looks like a cover. So, voila. There you have it. This is a long list, my friends. Stay with me. Bear with me if you can. And if you need to take a break, that's okay. You can always pause it, pause the recording, and go back to it when you need to. Okay. So here we have Monsieur, Monsieur. So you guys know that M apostrophe, or no, not apostrophe, I'm so sorry, with a period, M with a point means Monsieur. This is short for Monsieur, which means Mr. Arnaud, that's Monsieur Arnaud, that's his name, et bon cuisinier. So this means that Monsieur Arnaud is a good cook. But notice how we don't have the word for the here. And this happens in French. Remember when we learned about 
She's a good student. He's a good student. Elle est bonne élève. Il est bon élève. Bon élève. We don't have the article. Le, le. It's the same thing here. Whenever you're describing what somebody does and you're giving an adjective or an adverb to it, you're not going to use an article. So, Monsieur Anon est bon cuisinier. He's a good cook. Please write that down on your paper. All right. Il va faire cuire les carottes. This is a hard word here. Cuire. It's a verb. Okay. It means to cook. And we're going to talk about using faire. You know how faire is like the most useful verb in French. We use it all the time. And this is the future simple, a uh, future proche. I'm so sorry. Future proche. He is going to make, to cook the carrots. So in other words, he's not cooking them himself. He's having them cooked. Well, he's putting them in the pot and they're going to be cooked. So next to that, I know it's getting tricky now with the, with the grammar. I apologize. Um, Il va faire cuire les carottes. Next to that, if you could just put, he is cooking the carrots. <laughs> and we'll talk about it together. A little tricky. Same thing here. Il fait bouillir, bouillir, which means to boil. Bouillir is to boil. He is boiling the water à feu vif, which is on a high flame. So you know, if you have a gas stove or even an electric stove, you can have it on high, you can have it on low. This is on high boil. So il fait bouillir l'eau à feu vif. He is boiling the water in a high boil. So he's really boiling it. You have to do that with carrots, by the way. They never cook all the way through. He cares. Don't tell your mother I said that. All right. Next one. Il met, you know this, he puts, les carottes, the carrots, dans L'eau bouillante. Now look at this beautiful word, bouillante. So up here we have bouillir, to boil. And now here we have bouillante. When I add an A-N-T on the end of a verb in French, it's so easy. I get my present participle. It's the same thing as I-N-G in English. So he puts the carrots into boiling water. Boiling. Boiling water. So this word here is to boil, and this is boiling. And notice how there's an E on the end. That's because it's agreeing with lo, which is feminine. Don't worry about all that stuff. On your page, just please write, he puts the carrots into boiling water. I'm sorry, guys. This is a really long list here. Trying to make it quick, but I'm also trying to make it make sense. And it's so long, and I'm pretty sure I split this into two normally. All right. J'espère que ça sera bon. I hope that this will be good, says the chef. Espère is another new verb. It means hope or wish. Sera is a new verb tense that we're going to be learning. Will be. I hope this will be good. Okay. Now down here we have illes, illes, which means he lets or he allows. And then again we have bouillir to boil. Le carotte, the carrots, à feu doux. So you see over here we had afu vif. Now we have afu du. So vif is quick boiling water or high boiling, and du is soft or slow boiling water. All right, my friends, this is a very long list of vocabulary, and I'm pretty sure that I usually split it into two pieces. So that's enough for tonight. I've tortured you for enough this evening. <laughs> 
So sorry about that. Um, But thank you for listening. And I can't wait to see you next time. Oh, wow, me that neat. Make sure you've got all that written down. Um, And remember, you can always rewind the video and watch it again to get anything you missed. No pressure, no stress. That's what we say in French, right? No pressure, no stress. Au revoir, mes amis. Je vous aime.